Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Supervisors meeting for September 30th, 2021. Time is now 7.03 p.m. Uh, first order of business is to do the Pledge of Allegiance, so please rise and uh, join me in the, in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. First item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the August 21st, 2021 workshop meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next item is to approve the minutes of the August 26th, 2021 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. The minutes for the September 25th, 2021 workshop are not yet completed, so we'll table that for the next meeting. Next is the treasurer's report. Um, uh, doing that after. Sure. Okay. So, uh, uh, Irene? Really, uh, the one big uh, area of concern is that we're going to be receiving a lot less for the uh, liquid fuels allocation for 2022. Um, we've uh, received a less this year than we did last year. The difference is gonna be about $15,000. So that's something we have to keep in mind when we um, come to uh, budgeting and when we're considering any road work down the road. Other than that, um, the only thing I'd like to just share with everyone is uh, some of the items that we were uh, previously not getting reimbursed for from uh, engineering projects uh, that we were essentially eating the costs on when it comes to uh, services that should have been billed out to the residents. We've now received money. We've sent out about $6,000 worth in bills and received close to $4,000. And down the road, Courtney, I have a question for you as to what we can do with some of that aspect. And I'll save that for later. Okay. Okay. Other than that, really nothing much else to uh, discuss as far as the treasurer's report. Okay. Just as an add-on to that, next month is going to be the, the budget meeting that we're going to begin doing preliminary review on the, the budget at the workshop meeting and doing additional discussion review and hopefully finalization at the Thursday board meeting. That way we can advertise for the 2022 budget. Um, also related to finances, the next item on the agenda is to approve the payment of the bills for September 2021. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, so uh, Sue, we have nobody on the Zoom session today. If that changes, I'll let you know. Uh, at this time, I'll open up the floor to public comments. Anyone wishing to make a public comment, please come up and speak towards the microphone in the front of the room. Uh, if you do wish to make a comment, if you have not already signed in on the sheet in the front, please do so before making your comment. How are you doing? Good evening, Al. How are you? I see you here, I'm an uh, engineer for $9,000, $9,791. What do you do for that money? We can give you a, a breakdown yeah. on that. We can share yeah. the, the invoices. Right, and so, some of those, some of that is money that we are receiving back, but I think a large part of that is actually the culverts that we've been scheduling. Yeah. But for last month, I could get you um, a breakdown of it and a copy of the bills if you like. And nothing's unusual, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, but I mean, yeah. you got to cut the fat down a little bit. There's, there's no fat to cut. No. There really isn't. I don't yeah. see anything done. So why do we spend all this money? It's permits. It's, it's nothing that we can physically do right now. We have to wait for the permits to come in. So if you're waiting for the permits, why we spend all this money for your engineer and, and the lawyer? Because the only way we could get the permit is if the engineer does their job and applies for it. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that happens in the background, Al. And <coughs> yes, it's a lot of stuff happening, but we've got to start by saving money before before you guys decide to raise the taxes again. Uh, Al, we haven't raised the taxes in uh, I think the entire time that I've been on the board that we've been at two mills. So I'd have to look and see if that changed maybe the first year I was on, but we haven't raised taxes. Any of the tax increases have been school tax. That's the wrong goal was raised because I, you know, I, I know it when I pay the bills. Right, it's school taxes it's school that have tax gone up, not property taxes. Yeah, our, our millage has been the same. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking here, you know, all these people get big money. 
The little township, I guess. Come on. Why are we spending all this money? I want to see something that shows that we did this for the money. Well, if you want to drive out on a couple of the roads on the, I guess it would be the northern side of 422, there's oil and chip that was put down on out of just slightly less than a mile worth of road. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. oil and chip is a waste of money. You go back in about a month, you find nothing there, well, and you still got it's it's been more than months. a couple of months, Al. And huh? that's so we can we can discuss this at a later time. I'd be happy to talk to you about that related stuff. But other than road work, please take into account that generally speaking, the solicitor and the engineer are two of the most expensive components of a township. And they're necessary in the sense that it it meets the requirements for things when we do planning for projects, making sure that we're doing things legally making sure that things are done correctly and recorded correctly. Anytime we have changes that we have to make ordinances, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't necessarily have a like tangible top quality people here. I mean, I think you kind of get what you pay for on that Al and uh, granted if we could go to a different firm, but you're probably going to be spending roughly about the same, no matter where you go, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. If we need a new, a new lawyer, I can, I can, Bring somebody here and talk to you. Okay. We appreciate it, Al. For what I see in these papers here, we spend a lot of money for zero. Well, it's it's Almost not for zero. It's not for zero. And if you'd like to see any of the invoices, we'd be happy to supply them. Oh. I gotta read them all in these papers here and I, I get back to you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Not a problem. I could use I've seen numbers here twice for the same people getting paid. It's, it's multiple things like right. Al, the, the way the, dates yeah, the, way well. the accounting works is you're not, you're not going to see like everything. Like, let's say you had four things that you build the township for. We're not just going to show Al total amount. It's Al, 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 each one of those in amount. And that's because there's the different categories. Exactly. It's, it's the proper way of record keeping on that. I'm going to have to ask some of yourself in the next month. Can you bring it up? Okay. okay. We, look forward no to, we look forward to talking to y'all. Okay. Does anybody, thank you. Does anybody else have a public comment? Yes, sir. I'm not sure. Would you please come up here so everyone can hear you? Be before I'll save you the trip of walking. Is this about uh, the, the development thing? Yes. Okay. So I'm actually in effort of the Stonecroft residents that are here. I'm going to move that. That's agenda item number 23. I'm going to do that first. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Seeing no other public comments, we'll move into the main items for the meeting. Uh, as I just mentioned, I'm going to, for the, the purposes of uh, public interest, I'll move 23, which is the Cold Summit Farmers Preserve Industrial Park Traffic Planning and Design. I'll move that item up to the first position. Um, I apologize, sir. I don't offhandedly recall your name, but if, you, if you're planning on contributing something to the conversation, please come up towards the front of the room so that the mic can pick you up. Yep, that one. So just to, to kind of leave this off, uh, this is very early on in the process that uh, the plan or the proposal for the plan for this development has been submitted and a lot of things are going to start moving into motion. Uh, the first thing is any preliminary objections that we, we might have along with a traffic study. Uh, prior meetings we had discussed going in with Wolmelsdorf on this and I believe the last update was Wolmelsdorf met, they've agreed and they're going to start moving through the, the actual process of the traffic study. As more of this goes on, because none of this is set in stone yet, this is the, the opening gambit of doing a, a large industrial development like this. Nothing is absolutely decided. Nothing has been changed hands or anything like that. It's, it's very much in the, the infancy. So just to temper your comment, we're staying very immediately aware of this. Jim has offered to kind of take point, uh, especially because he's a Stonecroft resident. Not that we all don't have a vested interest, but him particularly, and he has a good dynamic being a resident of Stonecroft, working directly with the concerned citizens of Stonecroft. So not a whole lot of news yet, other than that we've kicked off the process. We've gone in with Wolmelsdorf, and there's going to be, I'm sure, a, a flurry of meetings as this starts to unfold. So uh, with, with you, that. You were at a prior meeting, that's that right? That's what I thought. I was like, that's so familiar. <laughs> like, we know you are. And I know you're, uh, I guess, typically, and I appreciate that. Thank you. He's, he's doing well right now. So I appreciate everybody who's been thoughtful of that. And if I don't have any answers tonight, 
Don't yeah. worry. We'll get them to you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Take yeah. it away, sir. But I appreciate that. That's a, that's a sweet thing to say. Thank you. My name is uh, Mark Brophy, and I am a resident of uh, Stonecroft. Mr. Brophy, Village. what's your address? 193 Rosebush Court. Thank you. 193 Rosebush Court. One more store, PA. 195. I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just for the minutes. Uh, I just like, before we go on, just if I may have a show of hands, it's Peter. Yes, sir. Peter, if I may have a show of hands. Who are the residents of Stonecroft Village that are here tonight? Could you just put your hand up quick? Thank you. Thank you. It's about half the room, more, yeah. a little more than half the room. Thank you. Uh, obviously, uh, we have a whole variety of concerns, being that we are in an adjacent community to this proposed project, uh, which really had no input or say because Stonecroft Village when the Zimmerman parcel uh, was zone industrial commercial rail, uh, Stonecroft Village was really just a, a concept at that time. Now we have 200 plus homes there and we're adjacent to this proposal, which has raised a whole multitude of concerns, environmental concerns, quality of life concerns. Uh, and yeah, we, we share the traffic concerns too with the, but both uh, Marion Township as well as the borough of Wilmersdorf may have. Um, my only question, since we're focusing in on the traffic studies mm -hmm. that PennDOT has done and will continue to do, and I am really a novice when it comes to reading and understanding what uh, these traffic surveys are all about and the input, I, I think will, my question is, will the residents of Stonecroft Village have an opportunity to provide their input in response to the studies that are done by PennDOT. So, uh, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so um, in the past when the, um, so Penn, PennDOT's doing its studies and then um, both Marion and Wilmersdorf have engaged a company, uh, TDP, I keep getting the acronym wrong, but <laughs> Traffic Planning and Design, yeah. who are going to review that and provide a summary. I, I personally have seen their work when they've done their own study and they did a presentation at Wilmer's Earth, I think it was about two years ago when they were dealing with the 419, 422 traffic light, which I've heard, I'm sure you heard Connie go on and on about. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. And we got lots of positive feedback, but they were very clear and they were very good at explaining things. And I did listen to those that were in tenants then. Um, so when those, when that, when, Traffic planning is like TPD. I need to get better at this now. Uh, does do their presentations. Those are public. Those are usually at a workshop meeting. And, and, how, and, and how, how do we find out about them? Oh, well, we'll make sure that it's, it's shared. It will be advertised. And keep in mind now that, um, so I don't know if you recall, but at, at, you might have been at the meeting where I referenced this in the past, and I don't remember. So last month mm. we went into effect uh, an amendment to the Sunshine Law. So agendas for each municipal meeting have to now be uploaded to their website at least 24 hours in advance, which gives you the benefit of if you know something's going to be talked about out at Wilmersdorf or at Marion or Maiden Creek, it's going to be on their agenda on their website at least 24 hours in advance. Their meetings are always the same. Uh, unless there's an emergency, and frankly, this is not an emergency. It would be an emergency if something yeah, somebody yeah, yeah, I was gonna say somebody died or something happened where or there's, there's an immediate an action needed. Like that. Yeah. But the uh, that gives you guys the benefit of knowing when that's going to be be part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, so I hope that helps give you guys a little bit of information. I know that. Walmart well, has a website. I think you guys we, we do. Mm -hmm. You do. You guys mm -hmm. are good about it. And so I double checked before I came today. Maiden Creek does, and they are complying. No Creek. No Creek. No. I mm -hmm. live by Maiden Creek. That's why. There was a listener who was for that. Yeah. Maiden Creek. But... Yeah. So they they also have a website. They should be posting their agendas. I also will tell you that because the township where the majority of the parcel is in is in Lebanon County. Lebanon operates a little differently than Berks County. And I'm looking at all of you guys because you're all looking at me. So I'm looking at you too. Uh, 
So, and I talked a little bit with you this the other day about this, and I've talked with Jim. So, Levin, so in most of Berks County, each municipality has its own planning commission that does the work. And we've talked through this before. You're getting used to me now. Um, <laughs> I'm making the rounds and so are you. Uh, where there is an arm of that municipality that looks at these plans for these developments. And that really tells you so much more about a project than what might be currently available online. Because I will tell you, I did Google this project and some of it clearly for marketing materials. Now they're getting more information, but in Lebanon County, they do it on the county level. And so that's been submitted to their office in Lebanon County. They're reviewing it. They have an engineering team there that is working with the developers and engineering team. Um, and there is information available online so far of what they've done. I know they've requested a variance for a small portion to be quite tall, which we talked about, but it, they made it very clear in that approval that it was a very small portion of the entire buildings and that variance was limited in the scope but they are the ones who have the majority of the power of how this is constructed where it's constructed on the parcel and have the most say uh, because it has to comply with their their ordinances as well so I will say most of the information of the project and most of that might be available at that office you are always welcome to right call things like that to them too. I know we talked about state representatives in the past, but the traffic study, once it's performed and once uh, travel plan design gets to have that report back and they're gonna come talk to, I'm sure they're gonna come here and come to a Womble Surf because they were doing it for both of you. Uh, that will be on the agendas. Uh, so that will be available for you guys. Um, and I know that this is a frustrating experience. So I'm, I made sure to try to get as much information through tonight. And that's what I know so far. The variance was very limited to only a small portion. Uh, and otherwise it's gonna comply with the height dimensions. Um, it's my understanding that it, at one point it was gonna be more buildings. It's been now down to two um, and a few other things, but that's all preliminary until we submit final plans. And it's my understanding they're still talking with uh, those who will be occupying the warehouses to figure out how they wanna design them. So things are still very, very early. I will tell you that, um, for example, I, I, my parents live right up in Bidingsville, right Route 100 is covered in warehouses. Every single warehouse there, especially the large one that was just built, took, I think that one took almost two years for that to be approved. And it, they had a lot of things they had to comply with. They had to help rebuild some of the roads um, and they had to uh, make sure it was far enough away from the road and that it was safe. Um, and they had to make sure there was enough green space. That's a really big requirement in most planning commissions that worry about with large developments is that there's adequate amount of green space for, and there's also enough, uh, enough is being done to uh, make sure that there's no storm water effects because you guys are adjacent, that's important too. So the planning commission, that's their role. It is done at the county level there. So those are the, that's the office that really is gonna look at those plans only as, what was it? One some acres, a little over. To, it's 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 areas? less than it's less than two acres. It's, it's a tiny acres. it's a That's tiny little foot. So the majority of that approval is going to be coming from that office. One benefit is you do have an office that does this all the time, um, but you also have somebody you have a department there that you can call. They're gonna be able to respond to you pretty quickly. They should be able to, um, and they you can also do right to you know requests with them as well. You have, so it might take them some time, or I will tell you, they might not have received their plans yet. I I will tell you, they might have asked for a variance, and if they didn't get it, they would have continued paying their engineer. And then eventually things might come in. I know, but I don't know how much has been submitted. Uh, I will tell you, there's usually a preliminary plan, and then that keeps getting edited and edited in final plan, and then there's an approval. So it is quite a lengthy process, even for, smaller pro projects but for something like this i know it's going to be a more intense plan for you i i is anybody other than you two does anybody have questions or did i answer your questions sir? in addition courtney um in addition um to the traffic and supporting what is being done by our township in this study and also combined with uh, Wilma's you know, yes. combining the efforts. Uh, there, again, in terms of the environmental impact, 
the community. Uh, again, I am not against, as I mentioned, to the Stonecrop community warehouse, but to have it adjacent to a retired community yeah. to be here uh, to affect the residents of Newmanstown, which has a children's park right smack almost down in the middle. Yeah. Uh, also, when we go cross over to, uh, again, Rumble Store, Girl, the elementary school, um, and it continues, and I won't go on because, yeah. but there's a lot of concerns, and I don't know where. Where has been the public input on this? Nothing to date that I'm aware of. It's no. early on. So we actually, we found okay. out about it at roughly about the same time that we put yeah. it on the agenda and shared it. Yeah. So we're, we're again, very in the early stages of this. And any, any opportunity for the board comment or for public comment, it's it's been our, our, our kind of our board mandate to welcome public input. So we'll make okay. sure that you're aware of it. And, and Jim McCarthy and I are both keeping tabs on it. We, are, we are, work with both. So... We're very aware of both. One final comment yes. from myself, uh, just information wise, mm -hmm. that there is a meeting of the uh, Planning Commission of Mill Creek Township next Wednesday evening. That would be October 6th at 7 p.m. And hopefully we will be represented at that meeting. They may not have a voice, but we will be there. Thank Jim. you. Uh, others here from uh, I'm done. Anybody have to Thank you. I spoke to you guys with me. I'm not going to rehash old stuff. My name's Joe Durr. Just for your clarification, ma'am. And I'm sorry, your address, please. 163 Rosebush. Thank you. Uh, I have spoken with uh, Ms. Chen 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 Chaney. I can't, I was looking for a name, can't find it. The di director of the Lebanon County Planning Commission. Okay. The only documentation they have at this point in time, she told me, was the ZHB notes, yep. zoning hearing board notes. She has no further documentation. The most current documentation is held by Mill Creek. It was in the packet that was submitted mm -hmm. uh, from Dan to the members of the board. Yeah. Uh, as of about a week ago, when I went over there to, receive, to look into getting a clearer copy of a document she'd already provided me, the young lady over at Mill Creek said that she'd not heard any forward movement on this mm -hmm. project in a while. So it's evidently in one of those planning or stall or roll along phases. But I just wanted to give you all this, all the information I that we had that. up to date. Yeah, I we, appreciate, and I, I appreciate the extra effort that you guys are going in, and how when I gave you guys resources, I really appreciate that you actually are utilizing those. I, I spoke to you guys a little bit a few weeks ago, and I really appreciate that. Yes, you good. guys have listened to that advice. It makes it makes it makes me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're trying to, keep, keep, trying to keep everybody in yeah, and, and hope that we get the same response. Yeah. So that we all know when this is going to happen, how this is going to happen. Yeah. Uh, but thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, do you know what time that meeting is? Mark, do you know what time that 16th. meeting is on the 6th? Uh, 7. 7? Yeah. Okay. 7 I'll be there. Okay. <laughs> thank you, guys. Okay. Uh, yep. I have some questions. You can entertain that. Absolutely. If we have answers, we have. Yeah, please. <clears throat> Mark, forward. 295 Sweet Birch Lane, Stonecrook. Uh, you alluded to a couple things when you started talking about like the water runoff and that. Are there any like state mandates that these people have to follow other than just like you said, Lebanon County has these? Yeah. Guaranteed, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Let, let me finish because I'll lose my train of thought in a heartbeat. Uh, you know, so there, there are those that have to follow like the water runoff, the, the air pollution, the traffic study. Uh, is there such thing? Maybe you do, you don't. Is there any such thing as like a noise study, a so, noise buffer that must be put up? Yeah. A site buffer that must be put up? Yeah. And what about the, anybody hear anything from like the school district, you know, that these trucks are going to be going up and down the road and these kids are going to be there and school buses and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> and when the traffic people come out, again, I don't know. That's why I'm asking questions. Uh, does somebody come out and look at, I want to say this so I don't get thrown out of here. Um, the, the way traffic gets tied up from yeah. one tractor trailer or one farm truck, and they're proposing, you know, a couple hundred, something like that. Yeah. And did anybody get any information on what kind of operation this is going to be? Is this a eight hour a day, five day a week, 24 seven, three, you know, does so, anybody know anything say, like I'll that? I'll turn it over to Courtney, but to, to kind of answer in order, uh, 
not a lot of information exists yet. I'd okay. imagine the school district. And I understand that. Yeah, I, I got it. I, I imagine it. the school district will have a seat at the table in some capacity, one way or the other, whether it's through one of the local municipalities or independently, because mm -hmm. that, that is very much a concern around noise, uh, just air pollution, traffic, just yep. general safety around that. And uh, part of the traffic study it will actually not just determine, okay, what kind of volume are we looking at right now? They'll try and extrapolate that, figure that out for, okay, this is the, the tentative size of the operation, which they really haven't nailed down yet. It's still early. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of volume you'd be looking at? How many tractor trailers? How many cars for employees? Mm -hmm. How many? They try to look at that and then weigh that against what the road conditions are, what the road size is, what the traffic accommodations are. Uh, to put it lightly, it, there are, I'm sure, projects where they look at this and they say there's no way, no possible way you can do this because you're trying to put a thousand cars down a road that can do a hundred in the course yeah, of the day. Yeah, when your liquid fuel tax dropping is going to help, it's going to hurt your road projects right off the yeah. bat. Yep. So, so I'll turn it over to Chris. I, I don't know what order I even asked him. I just had it in my mind. You want me to move out of the road so everybody yeah. can see? No, no. Uh, I just didn't want him to think I was being rude. <laughs> <laughs> I think at this point he's, he's okay with me. Um, so to answer your questions, so, uh, there is a lot of different laws that actually, and regulations that apply to any sort of development like this, um, both, both federal and state. And then there's local, there's local ordinances that apply. Can you tell me what order they go and who's, who's the top goal? The local? They intertwine and they tend to not overlap too much. So when it comes to environmental laws, they actually, and I will tell you, Jim McCarthy is better at probably at answering these questions than I am, but I can tell you enough from my experience sitting at meetings. They look at environmental studies um, that are conducted usually by environmental engineering firms. Um, they'll, they have to, the engineers really talk to each other about how to deal with these problems, but there is regulations at the state level, federal level, uh, with regards to, you know, how the use can, it, it's, there's just so many things that's part of, and then locally, that's where you get, there's a reason why all these warehouses are use the same zone, because we have zoning laws, but then uh, statewide and local, we have more of the stormwater ordinances, and we have things like that are, that are aimed at preserving your local environment, because the reality is, Arizona and Pennsylvania are very different environments. And so, okay. so most of that actually comes from Pennsylvania and also that uh, the engineers work with regulations that are developed by engineers to try to avoid stormwater issues. So there's a lot of things going to play. I will tell you the best person to ask about that is probably our engineering team. I usually can understand what the report says when they have a summary, but I can't list you everything because I'm not an engineer. Yeah. I regret it. I probably would have had less to and probably would have been sounded smarter half the time. But I will tell you, Jim and his his group deal with development all the time. Uh, so they know what they're talking about. But every I mean, I've sat at planning commission meetings and it's amazing all the things that are considered. Um, and when they go to get their building permits and all that stuff, I'll, PennDOT is the one who does the initial review. I will tell you they look at for the traffic. They're there for a long period of time looking at it broadly. Um, and if there's a big development like this, that's when you tend to see significant changes in roads because the developer might be willing to chip in for that cost. So you're seeing change if you see, if you're having a developer like that coming in. So there's a lot of things that are looked at. It is the stormwater, it is the traffic, it is the environmental stuff. Um, and there's far more regulation to try to maintain industry from influencing the community than there was maybe 30 years ago. So but Jim is Jim and his team are really the best people to ask about what all they look at. But a lot of the concerns you have are looked at, and there is uh, there's usually I have not seen a warehouse where there isn't some sort of visual or sound buffer. Sometimes uh, one of the big movements is for it to be trees, not just walls, because trees are visually more appealing, but they also actually absorb more noise. I wouldn't have known this, but that is that's been a big movement. But that's part of the conversation that happens at the planning commission meetings is they submit plans and it's more of a conversation between the engineers and the planning commission to try to get things to work out best for the community. Can I get one more question before I sit down? Absolutely. You got a, uh, that's Mill Street, mm -hmm. okay. Do they have any compassion or concern of working with the next township over when it comes to something like, I mean, you guys have a good working relationship. Uh, do they care? We've had I mean, that's a pretty blunt, blank, blunt yeah, blank and, question, but if they're going to be the ones, you know, affecting 
whether this thing sinks or swims, you know, it'd be nice for them to take some input from the neighboring township. So to answer it equally as, as bluntly, we've had interactions with them, never bad as far as I know. We don't have a very close working relationship with them. We have a better better relationship comparatively with like Tulpa Hawken. Mm -hmm. Tulpa Hawken we work with frequently about things, um, but that's something that we'll, we'll certainly be in close concert with them. Um, okay. As things develop, as more of it develops, we'll be in touch with them. Uh, we'll I be think, in touch yeah, with. Yeah, first I think that's imperative that that happens. But mm -hmm. I appreciate you being honest and telling me right yep. up front. Yep. Hey, thanks. Take Thank care. You. Have a nice night. When this study's done, Mark, my guess is that they're not going to be able to bring very heavy trucks through town mm -hmm. because it, our, our road won't support it. The lion's share of that traffic is going to have to come in third, make that turn, and go back down. 419. It's going to come in 419 and make the turn and go. That's going to be the problem. It's Wilmersdorf. It's going to have a huge problem. Oh, I bet. Mm -hmm. That's going to fight it down yeah. up for hours. I mean, yeah. We all know that. You know, yeah. I, I, I think you're right. Yeah. You know, you, you think that's what it's about. You know, I'm telling you personally, yeah. better, I hope it never happens. If it does, you're gonna, we're going to be coming through town and going out this way more and often. <laughs> they're tractor trailers, and if they employ 100 or 200 people, their cars trying to get out there three o'clock or 10 after three or whenever the shift ends or it might be a little better at 11 o'clock at night if they have more than one I, shift but that's the, the that's the traffic we're going to see a lot of i will i will say the traffic, traffic that he's taken into consideration not just the traffic that comes from the uh trucks but also those who are right. working there in their communities they, oh, yeah, they do they, they i do know they take that in, into consideration yeah. so i know that's a big concern for people um so that is part of what what is being considered. I don't know. I've I've heard people say that you just want to fail the bypass above all of you, and it's. I, mean, well, I appreciate it's it. Joke, Thank you. Thank you for making the public comment, Dan. I just have one comment for you. I'm concerned about the border. Dan, I'm sorry. Can you come up here so the Zoom people, the recording, can hear you? Nick? I, no, well, it's, I, it's, yeah, I was gonna say it's not so much the knowing who you are. It's I think the the mics aren't picking you up. In Klein 14 Rosebush Court. Thank you. Same town. Okay. Same place. Okay. I'm concerned about the water runoff coming from Weiss's farm and from Zimmerman's farm. We already have a new lake. We just don't want to improve that lake. <laughs> but they're they're working on the infield. We don't know what's gonna happen with it. You know, is it going to be successful or is it going to be another flop? So well, they won't be able to close out the, uh, the letters of credit or anything like that if it is a flop. Success is the only option. What's yeah. the warranty? Uh, it's it's a pretty substantial amount that they have in bonds yeah. right now. It's like yeah, I think close, close to like a million dollars or a little more. I think it's one and a half. Yeah, they have in. But yeah. what's the warranty on this new windfield? And that's a good question. Uh, the only thing I can say is we're not gonna we're not gonna approve something simply because we have a good engineer. We're not gonna approve something that is maybe pretty on the surface, but is not good underneath. It's the same discussion that they had with the roads. If yeah. there's things that we can do to test this, we're absolutely gonna test it. In the case of the roads, that means rolling a, a loaded like cement truck over it to make sure that there's not weak spots or deflection. I mean, I'd imagine yeah, we've already got sinkholes. Oh yeah. If that's, you drove yeah. by the development, we got yeah. a new sinkhole up front. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's that's something that we'll again closely monitor because I know they haven't in earnest started doing anything with that yet. They're planning on doing that I, from the last email. It sounded like Q1 of next year. Yeah. Um, so as they start to do that, much like everything else, whether it's the developers at Stone or anywhere else, we'll make sure that it's done right. And if it's not done right, they're going to have to do it again. That's what we want. Good. Yep. Okay, maybe take another question. Right? Certainly. You know, well, the studies they do. Do any of those studies have to do with like the aquifers underneath? You know, like we got wells and stone cross. Does anybody study them? So this new plan thing, you know, doesn't wreck those or have an adverse effect on them? Or can we ask for somebody to study them? Offhandedly, I don't. I don't know if they do, but I want to say that there's probably a component because I've seen maps from other developments that have like the geology. Consideration what else is it like the water quality around there? They're gonna probably make them connect to the public water, but they take into consideration all that, you know, so that they're limiting the impact of this on neighboring. They're not gonna and they're gonna make sure they're not damaging your property. 
yeah that's, and, the, that's the main goal of doing the planning um i from my understanding it's most likely that the majority of the warehouses because i've looked at a map where you guys are i have a good idea now. Uh, it's going to be quite a setback between stonecroft and the actual warehouses so i think the construction right near you will be mostly just paving the parking lots if anything okay, okay. Right. but it's that's an right that's a guesstimate right now no, i just wanted to get a record that i was asking about the aquifers and you know their water runoff or whatever they're going to do well then the storm water how water runs off is mm -hmm. a big part of what they review and what the planning commission looks at that is one of the number one concerns that happens especially in pennsylvania and so uh, they're probably going to have them build in stormwater basins that direct that with their water in towards their parcels rather than outwards. That's the main goal, to so try to keep it there and have it be able to drain properly. Okay, uh, it's common sense tells you they put concrete building, the water's not going to absorb the ground. But that's, but that's, that's why, the idea of studying that, right? Well, and that's what the engineers do. They actually have regulations that tell them how to handle okay. that. So. Yeah. Uh, Jim, Jim, when he's here, you're welcome to but you know pick his brain next time he's at the meeting but yeah he can tell you kind of more but i will tell you that i have not seen a plan pass without having an engineer really dig at that so storm water i'd imagine like i know marion has a, a waiver for the time being for ms4 i'd imagine something like this would it not would be able be to nice. waive ms4 requirements and they're yeah. they're pretty they're pretty restrictive yeah. in terms of storm water storm water is you don't mess with storm water. yeah it just causes yeah. damage yeah yeah <laughs> Thank you for coming out. Yeah. Well, we've, no, it's no, not an interruption. Okay. We appreciate it. Thank you all for coming out and showing interest. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay, we'll move into the next item on the agenda. It's uh, the 904 Performance Recycling Grant uh, for 2020. We have been notified by the Department of Environmental Protection that our uh, recycling grant was approved for an amount of $4,159.22. Uh, this is largely thanks to Dutch Valley Distributors for their recycling a massive amount of cardboard last year, totaling 176 tons. Next is the 2021 Volunteer Fire Relief Association. Uh, we have received uh, funds or will be receiving funds shortly uh, to a total of $11,432.63. Uh, Act 205 requires us to complete Form 706B and then issue these funds to the Marion Fire Company Relief Association within 60 days. Uh, we will need a motion to do this. Um, I don't think we have to wait until we actually receive the money. We can pre-authorize that. Um, I'll make a motion to authorize the disbursement of the Volunteer Fire Relief Association 2021 funds to a total of $11,432.63 to the My Marion Fire Company Relief Association within 60 days of receipt. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Motion carried. Next item on the agenda is the trick or treat night. Uh, at the workshop meeting, we made a motion to set the date and time for trick or treating for Sunday, October 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. and advertise in the community calendar of the Reading Eagle and the Myerstown merchandiser. Uh, so if you're interested in participating in that, please be sure to uh, either go out or turn your lights on and take part in the festivities. Next is election day. Election day is Tuesday, November 2nd, 2021. The secretary will be opening up the building in the morning for the poll workers. The township office will be closed that day, and I will be temporarily uh, relocating the electronic equipment out of the room in advance of that uh, so that they have the most space possible during the election. Um, I think we had decided I'll, I'll come in that evening and lock things up after they're gone. <laughs> I, can't, I can't make any promises one way or the other, Al. Um, <laughs> Next is the free shredding event. This is sponsored by Representative Barry Joswiak and the Fleetwood Community Bank. It is being held on Saturday, October 16th from 9 a.m. to noon at the Fleetwood High School. Uh, there is a limit of four boxes per vehicle. Uh, also, the county is holding a free paper shredding event at the Burke County Ag Center on October 16th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
Uh, they're also requiring a pre-registration for that. So if you'd like to, to go out, you can pre-register with the, uh, the Berks County Ag Center. There's also a hazardous waste collection for household uh, waste on October 23rd from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pre-registration is also required for this. Next item is the Berks County Association of Townships official 2021 convention. A motion was made at the workshop to authorize any interested supervisors, secretary, treasurer, tax collector, and uh, elected auditors to attend on Thursday, October 21st, 2021 from 5 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. at the Oleg Ferris Center. Reservations must be made before October 1st. There is no charge for this convention. I will be there as well. Okay. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. Next is the statewide tax recovery exemption request. Uh, this is for the 2010 tax year for per capita tax for Sean McCoy, who is now deceased. A motion was made at the workshop meeting to grant this request for exemption, as this has historically been granted in the past. PSAT's Unemployment Compensation Group Trust required a vote. Uh, we received a ballot for the election of trustees. Uh, of the two choices, you had to pick two, so it was a terribly hard decision. We have returned or signed off on that, making the two recommended endorsements uh, for both the Unemployment Compensation Group Trust, Municipal Pension Trust, and the Health Insurance Cooperative Trust. Next item on the agenda is the Berks County Department of EMS, uh, statements of costs for 2022. Uh, it is a cost of $21,546.10, uh, which is a 6.5% increase for police, fire, and EMS dispatching services. Um, if we authorize the agreement, rather than just leaving it as is, uh, the cost is actually slightly lower at $20,231.07. Um, I don't believe we have to immediately make a motion or anything around that this right this second, but we're going to want to do that sooner rather than later as we want to make sure that we take advantage of that almost 6.5% uh, difference. What's the next item? Oh, okay. Thank you, Sue. I, had, I didn't read ahead. Um, Berks County EMS Dispatch Services. Uh, this is... As Sue pointed out, the next item on the agenda, we have been paying uh, police, fire, and EMS dispatch fees to the county annually, which are subject to an annual increase without any limitations, and decided solely at the discretion of the Berks County Commissioners. They have decided to fix the annual fees subject to increases based on the inflation index and are requiring us to adopt a resolution and execute, execute a new agreement, uh, which Courtney will have, uh, to provide dispatch services before December 31st, 20, 2021. So um, here is the resolution prepared by our office, um, whereby you guys um, approve the agreement and you provide you with the authority to sign it. And then I have the agreement for you guys to sign. So I'll need some motions to adopt the resolution and sign the agreement. Do we want to look that over before? Yes. Yeah, as I say, I, I, I'd completely trust in your work, Courtney, but I'd like to read it before we, we well, do that. A so simple resolution, but I'm sure. I, 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 I know. I, I want to kick the tires on it before we do okay. it. Okay. Um, yeah. So we'll read that over and be able to do that either at the next workshop or the next meeting. Um, next item is the emergency manager uh, management coordinator equipment. Uh, John has gotten the radio, uh, but does not have a holder or strap for it. Uh, he'd like us to authorize the purchase of these peripherals. Um, we received a, a quote from 911 rapid response estimate, and we made a motion at the workshop meeting authorizing a cost of up to $65 for the radio holder strap and any other needed equipment to support that radio. Berks County Municipal Officials Breakfast is going to be held on Friday, October 29th. This is being co-hosted by the County Commissioners and the Berks County Municipal Partnership of the CELG. It's gonna be at the Onalani Grange at uh, 8 a.m. going until 10 a.m. Breakfast is followed by a brief set of commissioners remarks. RSVP must be made no later than October 15th. It's a good question, and offhandedly, I don't know. I want to say it's the supervisors. It's this is generally, the I believe it's only yeah. The supervisors. Usually, the municipal official ones is the board only. But I'll double check if there's any interest there, Butch. I'll take you to breakfast. <laughs> yeah. uh, you next, come to my house. Next is the declaration of disaster emergency. Uh, this needs to be signed for Hurricane Ida. A motion was made at the workshop meeting to sign this declaration. And correct me if I'm wrong, Sue, did I sign that on the way out on Saturday? Okay. So no further action needed, but that gives us uh, 
leverage on if there are things that we have to assign with FEMA or FEMA yep. or anything yep. else. And that um, that has been done. Yeah. So speaking of that, there are yeah. a number of people that did have damages related to the floods that have yep. reached out to the township and uh, reported it. This is extremely important as this does impact our overall ability to get financial support from FEMA or PEMA to help people repay or, or repair or replace anything that was damaged in the flood. So if you had any damage related to Hurricane Ida or know anybody that did that did not call it into the township, please let them know to do so. Uh, it's potentially going to be advantageous for them and everybody else uh, yeah. around them that was affected yeah. by this. As well as down the road in the events of another disaster, because we know the weather's changing. If you have flooding, anything related to a storm, whatever, please take pictures, contact the office, um, and John will get out there because we may be getting some funding from FEMA for this past storm. So please let us know. Okay, next item is the Stonecroft infield. Uh, this basin had been made much deeper previously with a plan that was approved by the BCCD and not our engineer. Uh, it's currently not draining and has turned into a lake. The Stone Group uh, will have to resolve this issue and based on some back and forth emails, they're tentative plan to begin work on that is sometime in the early part of 2022. So chances are we will, we'll keep it on the agenda, but we won't have any updates for the next couple of months around that unless they decide to, to start work early. They started some of the oh, work. they did. Okay. Well, so that's actually good news. Maybe they've, the, they've, they've turned it into a dust bowl now. Oh, geez. Well, maybe the, maybe the sinkholes motivated them to get out there a little, a little faster than originally anticipated. So we'll keep an eye on that. And I'm sure McCarthy engineering will be keeping a close watch on that as well, based on uh, the sheer amount of back and forth that has happened leading up to this point. Um, next, several items on the agenda are related to the road work. Uh, the culvert on Marion Drive at Jacob Weiss. Uh, we had received a cost estimate previously of $91,539.37 to replace this culvert, utilizing our road crew predominantly to do most of the work. Uh, we have applied for the, P, uh, the DEP GP7 permit and are anticipating the issuance of that uh, based on McCarthy Engineering's feedback around January 1st, 2022. So unfortunately, it does not look like we're going to be able to get that in okay. this year based solely on permitting. Um, similar situation for the culvert on Marion Drive North of School Road by Oscar Manbeck. This one was the one that was totaling at $59,423.79. Again, with our road crew doing most of the work, we're still just waiting that permit estimated time for getting that back from the department is around January 1st, 2022. Likewise for the Sheridan Road culvert, that was the one that was somewhere in the ballpark of 90,000 to about 119,000 to replace this culvert, which consisted of uh, end walls and uh, about $48,000 worth of precast in that. Um, most of the remaining cost is guide rails. And again, the only thing stopping us from getting started is permitting. Um, while we're in that section, it's not one of the, the official agenda items, but I'll move it up from the comments. One of the other things that we are actively looking at is a, a project that had been priced out and designed previously. We had tried to get it through grant money through BCCD, which is the, the small culvert on Canal Road. But that was um, the one that was 230 that, something. That was the one when McCarthy Engineering originally priced it out. It was, I want to say around 80,000. Oh. Um, and, and that was going one avenue rather than the other. And I want, I want to talk to him about that because that's several years old. And like I had mentioned to you, it's a fine line between box culvert and bridge. And you, you don't want a bridge because it does terrible things to your insurance. What was that location? Um, uh, it's uh, right on Canal Road there. Like was that in his most recent report? No. Oh, no. okay. That's what I'm um, I'm, I'm okay. kind of bringing this back up because we had okay. asked for grant money. And this is the one that when BCCD looked at it, they tacked on a whole bunch of other stuff, like the 15-foot the riparian buffer from 422 okay. to Canal on okay. Urban Brubaker's property and uh, a whole bunch of things with Trout Unlimited. And it skyrocketed the cost that they were, okay. they were looking at somewhere to the tune of a quarter million dollars. So we understandably said, like, thank you, but... No, thank you. Yeah. Um, even if we had got funding, the, the contribution on that would have been substantial. Um, I'd like to, again, like I said, revisit that based on the engineering drawings that we already have to see if there is something, maybe a slight bit different that we can do in terms of box culvert or something with precast, uh, or even if we have to go down the avenue of talking to the insurance for, okay, if this is considered a bridge in the loosest of terms, what will that actually do to the insurance? Do we want to maybe just bite the bullet and, and put in an open great road surface and be done with it? It might be substantially cheaper for cost, 
at the slight expense of a slight increase in operational expenditure and insurance. So that's one of the things that I want to look at again while we're in the, the mode of trying to address some of these problematic culverts that we have. And we're going to need to investigate the ones that John just found after that. Floor yes. Too. Yeah. So there's, there's yeah. a couple that, and we actually, we picked up some riprap, which will help on some of the, the heaving on that, but we are going to have to pick up some much larger rocks, like boulder size uh, rocks to be able to place there. So we don't have the same erosion concerns. Um, one of the other ones that uh, I can't remember if it was Butch or somebody else identified is a pipe that somebody keeps driving a tractor over and the end of it is crushed down. So we're going to have to take some remediation steps in terms of either maybe trimming the, the broken bit off or trying to rebend it, cutting it out and putting a head wall in. We're going to have to look at that. But the, the opening step on that particular one is to reach out to the property owner and, and ask them nicely to please stop driving heavy farm equipment over our pipe. Um, Can we limit weights on roads? I mean... For trucks, yes. Uh, Courtney, you'd have to keep me honest. I think there's some stipulations around agriculture where you can't limit that. It's the same reason that tractors, even though they're not normally road legal, are permitted on the road for certain activities. Um, and the the other thing to consider, Irene, is that pipe, yeah. the, the end that he keeps driving over is, is actually, property. it's it's out, it's in our right of way, but yeah. it's off the road. So yeah. he's not even driving on the road. He's driving over it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's pretty good. I want to put I want to put some bollards. Yeah. Well, step one is let's talk to the person and ask them to please stop doing it. Step two is to put some what, some markers. Are you are you volunteering, Butch? <laughs> yeah. Um, but let's see if we can remediate that, and if we have to go the route of putting a small head wall or something in to protect it, we will. But there are a number of them that are well known and documented for being failing and we have some other ones that as just the course of driving around we're, we're finding small little things that we need yeah. to we need to action on too yeah and we lost fifteen thousand dollars in funding essentially yeah yeah, yeah. i mean fifteen thousand dollars in the grand scheme of the operating budget is it's just it's a respectable amount yeah. considering yeah so that's that's something we'll have to yeah We'll have to try to adjust for because so looking at a sixty thousand. Yeah, that's going to take a big portion. Of well, I was just, I was just adding up these three here. Well, you and, figure and this is three seventeen. So yeah. that's the yeah. thing that we have. Yeah, yeah. you figure. You know, let's say one of these culverts is sixty thousand. That fifteen thousand dollar decrease is a quarter of that project. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, so these three projects alone eat up whatever we have in, in the account, yeah. and then it's a going over into savings and and taking money yeah, out of there we had actually moved money yeah, into savings before, just right. for the purposes of it it actually generates more interest than yeah. it's sitting there it might as well be yeah. working for us oh yeah yeah but we don't want to dip too heavily into savings but some of the some of the checking account money quote unquote is is over in savings yeah okay. <sighs> yes kelly one didn't get a chance to call a one it's on my to-do list scout's honor i will do that um okay. but uh, yes i know yeah. Uh, unfortunately, as I was talking to Dan, the operating hours that I've had to keep at work, I've not been able to make calls to anybody until well after they're closed. So I need to find time during the day to break away and do that because that's not going to be a terribly short conversation. It's not going to be an overly long one either, but I have to go through that with them in terms of where it's being painted and then make sure that they're coordinated. And then I, I have to, and I'm willing to do this, take some time off of work to go out and make sure that they're they're doing it in a satisfactory sort of pace. When we had the, the oil and chip, regardless of public opinion of, of oil and chip, the engineer was out for that because that's an engineering related thing. Line painting, not so much. So myself and probably Butch are going to be out there to make sure that they're doing it exactly the way that we've required because I don't want to have a situation where they paint it wrong and then we have to fight about it. So and we're still trying to get that done for 21. That's, yeah, I'm still trying to get that before 21 wraps. Um, if my memory serves me, they'll do that up until November. I'm going to obviously try to get them in way before that, but like middle to end of November is more of the cutoff for when you have to stop doing the line painting. So again, didn't get a chance to do it, but it's on, it's, it's high on the to-do list. Okay. Also semi-related to roads, mowing has been completed along 419. Thank you for doing that, Butch. And Spur Road and School Road, uh, we're still waiting for the asphalt to be put down at the intersection. Uh, one of the things that we are going to need, Courtney, is we will need an ordinance to put up a stop sign okay. there. 
Um, from talking to Andy and Jim McCarthy, because of the nature of how that road is, it's a lesser traveled road, I believe is exactly what it was called. Um, we don't have to do any traffic studies or, or warrants or anything around that. It just is a simple ordinance about placing that stop sign there. Um, next is 979 William Penn Boulevard, the flooding. The issue is largely outside of a right-of-way, which extends only one foot past uh, where the edge of the, the pipe is at the road there. Um, if we were to do anything, we would need an easement. There has been some follow-up discussion between the homeowner and Jim McCarthy from McCarthy Engineering, uh, where the homeowner has actually expressed an interest uh, to install a pipe directing the water around his home uh, at his expense, that he's willing to do that. And uh, very, again, very early on in the, the whole proceedings of things, but he's pr provided a preliminary sketch plan, which McCarthy Engineering is looking at. So at this point, the, the ball is, is essentially in the homeowner's court on how they want to proceed, and they'll, they'll deal with Jim McCarthy about doing that. Um, obviously, it'll have to satisfy certain stormwater and runoff requirements to make sure that we're not washing out neighbors either adjacent or, or on Talpy View behind. Yeah. So there will be more around that. It's just not anything right this second. Okay. And he hasn't called or complaints or anything the past couple of storms. Yeah. I mean, that whole stretch there, when you drive down from his house going in towards the farm, towards Stonecroft, there's just water pours off the properties. So, yeah. Yeah, that's something that I had messages out to McCarthy about. Because yeah. when we were out there, when we first talked to uh, Kenny, the the guy that was putting that in, they were talking about to make sure that they had put it in right when there was concern that they, they didn't put in what's called a clay pour okay. on the on the berm. So I'm sure there's some follow-up there that okay. McCarthy Engineering did, but they're, again, taking a very active uh, review of that to make sure that it's being done right and properly to plan. Because um, all things being equal, when the, when the pipe's clear, when that retention basin is there, and when whether it's a regrading of the property like we had talked about with Kenny or that pipe's, Mm -hmm. you effectively remove all three of the avenues in which water is going to either collect yep. or run yep. on that property. So, okay, next, we already covered the cold summit. Uh, building maintenance is the next item after that. Uh, so I'll turn it over to, to you, Irene, if you want to cover that one. Uh, no updates on any contractors giving us estimates for this building. And at the workshop meeting, we had discussed uh, largely a lot of the issues that we have with this building and just uh, kind of dealing or discussing the concept of perhaps it's time for a new building. That's something we're, we're going to have to get a lot of numbers on and design a project. And that's not anything we're rushing to do before we have numbers about everything. So there's still a lot of data gathering at this point, and we're going to have all that information before we would make a decision. And that might not be a year or two years from now uh, with the way contractors are giving us information. So we want to have numbers so that we could make a decision as to what the best next course of action is. So unfortunately, I think it's going to be quite expensive to rehab this building. And we're not even talking about anything cosmetic. We're talking about necessary rehabilitation. So just for everybody's understanding, when we when we talk about doing a cost benefit analysis or a cost comparative analysis between this building and a new building, we're not talking about dem demolishing this building. We're talking about breaking ground somewhere else. Um, despite the fact that the building is not on a historical register or anything like that, we do recognize that it is a um, historical component and a landmark within the community. So we don't want to see it we don't want to see it go to waste or fall down or get demolished or anything like that. We just want to make sure that uh, in terms of what the township is doing from a financial standpoint, we're making the most prudent decision possible for making the space as good as it can be, whether it's here or elsewhere. Thank you for putting that so eloquently. Okay, next is the American Rescue Plan Act. This uh, kind of dovetails into the building maintenance. Um, at last month's meeting, we authorized the transfer of the first uh, ARPA payment, which was $100,848.79 from the general account to the general money market accounts um, so that it actually makes a little bit of interest on it. Uh, PSATS expects the U.S. Treasury Department to issue final rules during the fall of 2021. The first report is due October 31st. PSATS recommends waiting until the instruction guidelines come out, um, and we're going to have to 
pass a resolution to amend our 2021 budget. Courtney, is that anything that Andy mentioned to you as far as a resolution? No, we did not. Okay. So we have a sample resolution from PSATS and uh, I'd like you to take a look at it and so see if that's sufficient. If it is, then at our next meeting, I anticipate that's something that we would do. It, it's meeting, it's pretty basic, but yeah, we, it, we want to make basic. We want to make sure that yeah. we're properly reflecting the unexpected income in yes. the budget. And yeah. so we can anticipate for the next budget, we would have to include that funding in our uh, new budget. Um, but as of now, we're just basically sitting on those funds until we get the final. Final. What do you mean? The the increase? Yeah. We're going to get the same amount. Yeah. So it's it's another one hundred thousand eight hundred eighty four dollars and seventy nine cents. But there's very strict guidelines as to what we could use the money for. We cannot use it for just anything. It has to be very specific according to the Treasury Department. The last thing I want is to spend that money and then have to pay it back. Yeah, it's the same thing. Like if you do something technically yeah. improper out of the road funds, if you don't log a receipt right or you pay for something that's not approved when they audit you, you ultimately have to pay it back. So we, we need to be very careful about exactly what the money is used for. Yeah, be careful on raising taxes, but you ought to be general class, you want to spend that money that's for it. You know what I mean? So be careful with that. Well, it's, it's, I don't know about this lately. We're, we're going to get it one way or the other. So it's our responsibility to make sure that when we have it, we do the right thing with it both from a use standpoint and from a guideline standpoint. So, okay. Uh, next is the Tulpahawken police contracts. There's an addendum to agreement, which expires December 31st, 2021. Uh, Andy is, or was working on a new agreement res and resolution to extend the contracts. Uh, Courtney, I believe you sent a draft copy to Tulpahawken solicitor. I did. I did. Yesterday, the day before, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we have yeah. response back. I think so, but we yeah, we, yeah, we have the draft. I thought yeah. we have the draft. Well, we have we have what Courtney sent. We don't. Well, there's no there's no response yeah. okay. yet. No, we need to make sure it's agreed upon by both solicitors. Yeah. and then okay. we'll have the resolution as well. Okay. In case that they have revisions to our draft, I want to make sure that that's agreed upon by them as well. Okay, cool. Hopefully, we'll have that for next month's meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next is the semi quincentennial for the Commonwealth of PA and the USA. Uh, this is for July 4th, 2026. Uh, we received a, an email from Paul Jansen from the CELG. They would like all municipalities in Berks County to pass a resolution supporting the PA Commission for the U.S. Uh, Semi-Quincentennial. According to Paul's second email, we may or may not decide to directly participate uh, and are not required to participate even if we opt in. So we don't have to do anything with that again right this second, but this is mostly, uh, I think, a resolution supporting the action of celebrating that and then maybe some subsequent activities if we decide to participate. Yeah, right now they're simply asking for the resolution. Um, I did fail to bring it in my packet. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Like, like, no, it's, it's okay. So <laughs> there's there's really no rush around it's this. No, so no, there's no rush. Ideally by the end of the year. Um, and then you guys have plenty of time to plan how you'd like to celebrate. But yeah, I'm sorry. No, it's uh, no need to apologize. So that may it's be something. <laughs> That may be a perfect opportunity to work with the community association on on some events. So I know cool. I know yeah. some of our other our other municipal clients have uh, attendees who've been at their meeting who actually it sparked an interest in them to participate in some things. So maybe that would do the same for you. Okay. Next up is the rental inspection ordinance. This would allow access to rental properties every other year. Um, one of the questions that we had posed was where do Airbnbs fit in? Um, so Courtney, after reading through that, the way that the sample that we received is written, and it's a very good one. I only had a couple of small criticisms about it. Um, it doesn't really account for Airbnb. uses like Airbnb. The cutoff yeah. is if you're renting a property to a tenant for more than five days, which if you have somebody that's there for three days or four days. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's been a hot topic. I actually wrote a bunch of articles on that. If you guys are like Googling me, uh, <laughs> uh, we can look at that, um, uh, with where it's like that more or less than five days. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Are you inspecting? Residential properties that are being used as B and Bs, or that are really because A B Airbnbs can appear to be a home. Mm -hmm. Bed and breakfast tend to market themselves as being a bed and breakfast. 
And so you have to try to, we have to try to tackle our ordinances so that those that are being used as Airbnbs are being inspected yeah. almost equivalently. But yes, we can look at that. Um, so my, my thought, and I don't know where this fits in or how much water it carries from a legal sense was just a simple add on that if you're renting it out to a, a tenant for more than five days or rent the property out for more than X number of days per year, regardless of number a, of tenants. That's one technique that's been used. Um, you mostly see actually uh, ordinances try, try to fit Airbnb into their ordinance hmm. with zoning ordinance. So I can look at zoning ordinances because um, yes. a good area where Airbnbs have been trying to be regulated is actually more in zoning. Okay because of course you don't want maybe 20 yeah. people parking at a place that's supposed to have four. Unless yeah. um, Reading in particular, they were concerned about that at one point. Um, so I can get examples of that. We can we can intertwine that language. I think they tackle, I've seen them tackle it in a bunch of different ways to try to get around it. Um, I will just say ultimately it's, it can be hard to enforce uh, unless you see the Airbnb posted. Yeah. Yeah. The, the square footage per person. Yeah, I was actually going to yeah. move into the next thing. You can take that one and go and run with it, Irene. We were just uh, concerned also, just reading through that, was it Richland Borough? Yeah. Yeah, as, as far as the square footage per person, can we have a minimum requirement? Yeah, so Courtney, just to, to kind of mm -hmm. expound upon that, one yeah. of the things that we noticed in there is there is, uh, under the, like the family definition, it says mm -hmm. if you have like one to four people, it's you have to have these sorts of space requirements. If it's up to this, it has to be this. There's really not a top end of that, that that's a limiting factor for you can only have X number of people in a home. Like there, there seems to be kind of an open-ended portion of it that you could say like, yeah, it's got these minimum requirements for six or more, I'm gonna jam 25 people in here. Um, and the, the immediate yeah. thought that I had was if it's uh, over a certain amount, like anything in excess of six, the, the, the size must reflect a minimum number of square foot gross per person. So if you had- so I I'll check in with Jim on that one. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, fire codes also? Well, yeah, so, so there's a limiting too. factor for fire codes, but it just seemed like yeah. there was a little bit of a... Um, you always have to be conscious, though, when you're... You don't put a cap on a number of people living somewhere and it's not fire code related or safety oriented because you do not want to face... Yeah, well, we don't want to We don't want to try to supersede anything, but my yeah. point was if, if we have... I can, I, I will say Richland, we can look at theirs. I can look at ones where they might, I'll look at a couple different options okay. and see kind of what we can do for you guys. I, I hear what you're saying. It just might be a matter of, I got to talk with Jim. Okay. I, I, I didn't look at that one in depth, so. That, that's fine. Yeah. So, and the only other one that, that I clued out was uh, under the one penalty section. It actually, oh, yes. it's, it's kind of regressive in the sense that if the property owner does not comply yeah. with that, tenant ends up getting evicted so <laughs> that's that's always a complicated one um one you if it's if it's a, if it's a inspection to the point where it is uh unsafe for those people to stay there over the night mm -hmm. you really do you do you want to risk that happening that's part no. of the goal so and then on top of that um that's the, the main main thing. The other thing is it's really hard to uh, to enforce it otherwise, other than to say it's no longer inhabitable. I, I mean, there could be fines, but ultimately they could just keep paying fines and, and keeping their tenant there. So the, the thing that I, uh, we need to see if there's uh, any legal standing for this was rather than a, going down the, the clause of like evicting the tenant is if you don't, even if you pay the fine, if you have a certain number of infractions for the same thing, that we would be able to invoke that you're essentially you have to pay for us to come out and fix it. I, I you can get Jim's opinion. I'm gonna tell you, yeah. don't fix people's private property here. Yeah. Well, I meant like yeah. it's the same thing as if we had like an IPMC situation. At some point, you could have to have it remedied forcibly. Yeah, that's um, what I would talk with Jim about that. Yeah, but I, I, I will just say, you know, if there is a tenant there, you always have that risk where, it, you know, potentially damaging personal property. Yeah, uh, for, for sure. I don't want to be in the business I, of I doing will, that. I will say, you guys can always talk about like different levels. Mm -hmm. So you have fines for things, but then there's certain things that you're going to discover that make it that nobody should be in that that building well, that night. Yeah, and that's when you need to say. Okay. So, so yeah. yeah, and so the tenant, on the other hand, 
would have a remedy if they have a lease in place. They have so, their own so, remedies. Right, right. So, yeah. so they, have well. their, yes. they have their own remedies there. So yeah. I, it, it's just not the way it reads when we were reading it that way. But yeah. now that you're explaining. Well, there's different better. ways we can right. approach it. Uh, and I guess the big concern is if, if you have somebody go and perform an inspection and it's very clear that it is not safe for them and their family to be there that night, uh, yeah. that's the strongest remedy to get it fixed promptly. Um, and you also then avoid any sort of physical harm to somebody. But I will say when that happens, uh, if it turn, if, you know, the place is not passed inspection, that tenant has their own rights. Yeah. The tenant act, so. Yeah. And, and situations where something is like wildly unsafe or the property should be con condemned. My concern was if you have somebody that like, uh, you don't have a GFI in the bathroom, like, yeah, it's a safety thing, but if in the grand scheme of relatively minor, if somebody doesn't. Yeah doesn't react to that and they just blow it off they ignore the fines they just pay the fines whatever well you can you... always have fine fine all right now we take stronger action yeah and that um, that's kind of what i was looking for is i don't want to necessarily you can have a step up scale you, i mean there's different ways of doing enforcement we can i can look to see can I do a survey i'll tell you that you you're gonna see probably differences in methods based off of community so you might see a different technique used let's say in west reading where the houses are close together mm -hmm. um, versus uh, even even mobile surf might have it slightly different than definitely like uh, Pike is not going to have the same type of ordinance. So yeah. mm -hmm. uh, we can look at different ones and mm -hmm. you guys can kind of see, we don't have to copy and paste an ordinance. That's the best that benefit yeah. of. Yeah, that, that was really the only thing that, that jumped yeah. out at me. And it, th thank you for explaining that. That does actually shed a little more yeah. light on it. Because yeah. the concern was if somebody's had to live with a, a poor living or unsafe living condition, the last thing you want to do is throw them, the, the poor individual or individuals out on the street for like, well, right. we're sorry that your, your landlord was not doing what they were supposed to do. Out you go. Yeah, so. yeah but they do have their own rights. And, um, and I have to say the Landlord Tenant Act is really tenant friendly in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, that was the, the principal concerns therein. Otherwise, I think it's it's good. It's it's focused largely on safety. It's not about like, oh, well, your your walls are painted the wrong color or this or that or the other thing. Do you guys have um, questions? We have we, we have Richlands. We have I called for the resource. I didn't get it yet. Okay, register. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then um, perhaps call less writing. We may have to get less writing. Just because they have a ton of tent. That would be very interesting. To there. Mm -hmm. you know, that might, them and YMSA might be the only ones where I think, well, oh, there's a cool ton of yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we can get a handful, it would be nice to be able to stare at them side by yeah. side and see what yeah. we think fits yeah. the yeah. best or yeah. conglomeration of ones that, that do. But uh, I think overall, it's going to be something that is going to help people mm -hmm. and gives us something in our toolbox if somebody has a complaint I know when where we would be able to help. Theirs, they, they were really happy when they did because they went into a few places and it, that weren't, hadn't been being inspected and they things got safer after that. So, As an interesting follow-up question, do yes. things like motels and hotels, do they count as rental properties? It depends on how they're zoned, okay. how they are described in zoning ordinance. They are usually considered uh, like defined as a, a hotel or a hospitality property. Um, we'll get into that. Yeah. I'm just, what about I'm, their long term tenants? Long term and short term tenants? Yeah. What if you have somebody because uh, uh, names will not be named, but there's a particular property that has people that, that live there long term? Or. What are we talking long term? Like more than a month? Oh yes. Years. Okay, Years. well that's that's a landlord. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's the reason I asked that but question. It, it really depends on how you're defining things in ordinance. Yeah. Okay. So well, there, I'm sure there'll be matter. some there'll be some more follow-up discussion yeah. on that because that's that's gonna influence how we how yeah. we structure that to be able to address certain things therein. And if you do have an Airbnb, they also are able to pay uh, hospitality tax, which is not levied by the county here, uh, but it is levied by the state. And we've had a couple of phone calls about people interested in Airbnb. So um, long since they're permitted to use under your zoning ordinance, you can't do much, but yeah. you can you can make them require the inspections. I'd have to find out. Yeah. I, the last time I looked, I don't think it is. Like, I don't think it's 
prohibited. Then, then I'll take a look at your zoning ordinance and we can talk through that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'll send you my article. Okay. okay. I look forward to reading it. Okay. We're, we're almost done. I promise everybody. Um, hey, next. Before we move on, I have yes. a question. So I'm down at 46 Main Street. I've only been here one time to discuss this the property that y'all were referring to was not a residence. It was a motel thing that you're all talking about, which is not even zoned as regular residence. So we've all had this discussion before. Y'all know how I feel about it. And a lot of the other people are just scared to say anything that coming in and inspecting someone's home twice a, every two years or whatever it is because they run out an apartment is like really so, none of your damn business. So I mean, let me I, let me finish, please, because okay. I don't interrupt you. So you know, if you are not having any major problems, like we have someone that has birds, he does a great job with his birds. His birds don't stink. There's not a problem. We have some other people in town that have birds, quite the opposite of bird owners. Bird owners, nonetheless, I'm just using it as a completely separate example. So if you are not, if you are having a problem, as you stated at mm -hmm. the other meeting of this particular place, which you were hinting at now, mm -hmm. they don't have anything to do with the people that you're trying to sanction now. We've had what? other, we've had other complaints in the past that we have been largely unable to act upon. It's not the first time. Mm -hmm. I understand where you're coming okay, from. Okay, at some point we have to be adults. Mm -hmm. At yes. some point we have to solve our own problems. Yeah. We have burn issues. You know, that comes up here sometimes people complain about burn and other people don't complain about burning. We have the people complain about the speed limit. So we change the sign and still speed. At some point, we got to be adults. And at some point, we should have the right to privacy of our own properties. I mean, I'm not here in this town renting out property. I told you about my story before personally. Mm -hmm. But at what point do we not pay for our house, mow our grass, pay our taxes, pay our insurance to be left alone? Isn't that part of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that we should have here? I mean, if someone really has a problem with their um, landlord, there are tons of places that they can call. And like one of you mentioned, getting places condemned and all that other kind of stuff. I mean, at what point do the people doing the right thing every day, being a good neighbor, baking the apple pies for the neighbors and checking on the ones that are sick, why, why can't we ever just be left alone? Because once this stuff gets on here, it gets more and more and more constrictive. All the time, I listen to you talk, young lady. I mean, God bless you. But I just watch the little things you say. You just love this whole we'll change that word. This will make it tighter. But at what point are we not here? If there's an issue with this motel, that's not residential. That's not who we are here. That's a totally separate zoning category. So when you discussed this before to we the people, it was not regarding our homes. Well, you said it wasn't, but the property or the problem with isn't residential. It's commercial or whatever you call that up there on 422. It's not us. I mean, you know, it's not fair in how you're marketing it. It's not fair who you have the issue with. 98% of the people here are great people. I mean, take anything, go to your job, go to your family, go to another state. There's always a you-know-what in every crowd, but punishing the, uh, the majority of the people is not right. We're not on the second grade playground. It's we're, just not right, and, and that's, it doesn't need to be. And that's why we're having this discussion over how to handle this the best. And that's why we haven't jumped to approving any kind of ordinance. That's why we're picking through all the information and we're trying to decide what is best. Well, and just let yeah. people live their life is best. Absolutely. But, but continuing to go into people's homes and inspect them, and it, wait, 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 you're, wait, 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 worried wait, wait. About a, you're worried about a water outlet. I mean, or a club near a GFI. I mean, you know, come on. A lot of these homes have been here for a hundred years and they haven't burned down to the GFI. Do I think they're safer? Of course they do. You know, of course it is. But we got right. to the point where kids can't even ride a bike anymore without a helmet and knee pads because it's safe. I mean, I got scars all over me, and here I am. That's fine. But but, but the problem is once you rent out your your residence, it's no longer your residence because you've created a business relationship and now you're providing a business opportunity to someone else. So, you, so does the Avon lady so, so when you, she comes into my home. So you've created a whole different relationship and as that business owner, you now have a responsibility to that tenant. Right. And so it's different. It's it, There's, correct me if I'm wrong, there's a whole different relationship because although you're the property owner, that person is in that place of residence and you have responsibilities according to state laws 
This is state laws. Right. So we right. don't need to add more reason. here and more and more and more and more. We're, we're not, we're not, we're trying to, we're not at all. We're trying to make sure that those laws are being followed. There is the IPMC. We're asking that people that hold their places of residence out for rent comply with the local laws. And the only way we're gonna know if that's getting done is if we say, hey, we're gonna come and give you a visit once every two years. If you don't like to do that, then you don't have to rent out the place. But you don't have to go in everyone's business who is a who is so so a if, problem, not a problem. Right? So so are you looking at the position of the owner or, or the person being the renter? Well, I've because, been both. Right, I've and, been both in my whole and, life. And, and I've I've been a renter of, I was a renter for a very long time. I lived in very unsafe conditions. But not, then why didn't you move? I did, but not knowing about it is part of the problem too, as the renter. I didn't have the knowledge. It was only until I had a friend from the fire department come over and take a look, and they were absolutely astonished at the conditions that we were living in, what the, what the safety violations are. And there are plenty of places to report that already, there, without more and more and more and more and more. Al always talks about all the BS money we spend. So we're, we're writing more regulations, we're having more meetings, and all that we pay and we pay and we pay and we pay and we pay. And we pay. And it just layers on layers, and it's not necessary. It is just not necessary. If, if it wasn't that. necessary, we wouldn't be having this conversation. There's lots of things that aren't necessary that we discuss in here okay. that cost our money and our time and infringe on our rights. Oh. And, and over and over and over, it should not. I mean, discussing are we going to max a six on a house? Good God, we live in Mennonite and Amish territory. How are we going to? How are we going to limit? How are we in a house. Now we're talking about family size restrictions. No, that wasn't That's, the conversation yeah, at all. It was yeah. made as a comment of how many people can be in there. You discuss no, so, so, it was, no. It was so, square so, footage per person. It's it, that's not the conversation at all. And if you'd like to change things, if you'd like to be one of the people up here, then please run for public office. It's a possibility. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I'm just trying to say, please, we the people please here do, so. do not want more infringements on our rights and our property. Okay. If there is plenty of places, if there is an issue with an unsafe, call the fire department, call the health department. Right. God knows there's plenty of places to call. We don't need more. Right. But we can't get in with what is currently on the books. That's the problem. You're right. The vast majority of people are they're right. Uh, exactly. Yeah, they're you, not, you they're not creating any issues. It's the few that are causing us to have the problem is, and there are, and there are people who, but there are people who have ignored our ordinances for years. So let me. Let, let, we do. We do go after them. They don't like it very Jim, much. Jim, let me let me make two two, two quick points just to interject. So first and foremost, this doesn't affect residents. This I, this affects you as a landlord if you are renting out if you are entering into that business arrangement this is not going to have any impact on you in your personal home the only time that you're going to be subject to an inspection is if you do renovations and you get a permit otherwise it's a purely business dynamic if you are renting a property out you have to maintain a certain bare minimum requirement of safety it's no different than if you have a food truck or a restaurant where you have to conform to food safety standards this is the regulation that allows us to keep people safe Pure and simple. And to your comments about 98% of people being good people, I agree with you. It's probably even a higher number than that. Yeah. But ultimately, adults need to be adults. You're spot on. We have to have laws in place to make sure that we can address the people that are not doing the things that they're supposed yeah, to do. So, so whether we agree or disagree, I appreciate your public comment and your, your enthusiasm and zeal for making it. So thank you very much for that. Anything additional from the board? I'll keep my mouth shut. Okay. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> yeah, Jim, Jim's the smartest one on the board, just throwing that out there. Um, next up on the agenda, the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance Amendments. Uh, this is for Robazonia Borough. This is to designate convenience stores with fuel pumps as a separate or distinct use within the town center. Uh, highway commercial, general industrial, and light industrial zoning districts. This will also provide use specific regulations around parking, vehicular circulation around pumps, placement of ventilation equipment, setbacks for fuel pumps, maximum number of pumps, et cetera. Convenience stores and fuel pumps must be owned and operated by the same entity and no repairs may be uh, made, conducted, or, or operated on the site. Um, so really just to boil that down into real simplistic terms, they're looking to change the zoning so that uh, places like Wawa can actually exist 
within the zoning. The way zoning was currently written to have a fuel pump there, you'd have to be a service station, which is a kind of very outmoded way of, of yeah, doing that. Be an auto body. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and there is a specific parcel that it looks like the well was looking at. So it was for that, um, that it's on all the, all the places that are being changed. It's on very new state roads. Uh, so it's not like you're gonna have a Wawa next to you. Yeah, we're not we're not gonna see a, a Wawa pop up across but, the street, uh, but it's it, it's not really changing it. It's just quit making it so that you don't have to have a auto repair service. Shop yeah, as to have a convenience store because unfortunately that's how it was, um, and I don't think that's quite common anymore. Unfortunately, the change. Yeah, it's it's very outmoded in the sense that you don't see repair shops with fuel. And you don't see convenience stores without fuel really that much anymore. Um, our planning commission recommended to the board that we accept this amendment condition upon the resolution of the Berks County Planning Commission comments. Um, at this time, I haven't seen them come back yet, so we're just going to continue to wait on that. For North Heidelberg, the apartments in the medium density residential district, um, in having a minimum average lot area of 7,500 square foot. Uh, we have not gotten any comments back from Berks County Planning Commission on this also. However, our Planning Commission has recommended that we accept the amendment conditioned upon the resolution of the Berks County Planning Commission. Uh, the next Joint Planning Commission meeting is Thursday, October 21st. So following that, there may be some, some things that we can actually act upon, but for the time being, it's kind of wait and see. Next is the 2022 proposed budget. Uh, we will need to decide if we're going to have a special meeting based on the discussion on Saturday. I think we're all leaning towards not having a special meeting and doing this at the next workshop meeting and the next board of supervisors meeting. Um, once the budget is finalized, uh, we'd have to make a motion to accept it and advertise the budget and make it available for public inspection. It must be advertised at least 20 days before the final budget is adopted and must be adopted by December 31st, no later than December 31st. Next is the update to the subdivision and land development uh, fees at stormwater management ordinance and the fees therein. The saldo subdivision and land development ordinance is from 1991 and the fees are from 2005. The uh, stormwater management ordinance and fees are both from 2002. Uh, Jim McCarthy did send us a copy of why missing's fee schedule. And we're going to have to do kind of a direct comparison against our current fee schedule to see, firstly, where we're very low, which I'm sure we are. Yeah. And secondly, where there are things that we have not been charging back fees to individuals doing development or stormwater management projects uh, where we could be and should be. Yeah, Sue was kind enough to print everything up. So I will have all that hopefully reviewed before our next meeting and be able to present that because... I'm hoping that impacts our budget, you know, maybe just a little, but yeah, we need to change those fees. Yeah, it's, it's a, I'm actually scrolling through the pages here. There's like eight pages yeah. of, of possible Scary fees. Yeah it's, yeah, it's big. So yeah. we'll need to do kind of a side-by-side -side comparison yeah. and see what things are applicable, what things are not, what things we have, what things we don't. Um, Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, as I say, the, okay. the, the wonders of spreadsheets. I'll do that. Um, what we'll want to do after we do this one is start going through systematically on the other ordinances and doing similar and getting into an annual posture of doing a, a fee review. Um, a lot of times, I think year over year, we probably won't see an increase or we may see a very minimal increase, but this is something that right. we need to get in the habit of doing so that we don't have something that's essentially uh, 20 years right. out, outdated. The problem, I guess, to explain to everyone, these are fees that were charged by the engineering firms. And so we shouldn't have to pay them out of township taxpayer funds. They should be paid by the people doing the projects. So these need a huge revision. Yep. Speaking of that, the one of the things is the payment of engineer and attorney fees. Yeah. Uh, things like reviewing the stormwater plans, things like that. Yeah, Courtney, um, we've got a question for you on this. Okay. So we've gone through stuff, and this is something that both Jim McCarthy and uh, Andy um, touched upon in the past, and we just started following up with it. So we have a bunch of fees that um, we were told that we, we shouldn't be paying those costs. It's, it's fees that are charged to the homeowner, and we're just kind of the pass through. Mm -hmm. So what we've been doing is we've been sending out letters saying, can you please pay this amount, blah, blah, blah. 
And for the most part, most again, most residents have been compliant. These are these are their personal fees that they have to pay for engineering services. Mm -hmm. um, but we have uh, one resident in particular that has not paid those fees. So at the workshop meeting, we we're talking about what can we do to um, ensure that people pay these fees because there is this fees that they should be paying. We shouldn't as tax. We shouldn't be eating these costs, mm -hmm. which unfortunately we found out we have been for years. So I guess question number one, how far back can we go to send out these fees? Andy was supposed to get us um, information, but I think he might've mentioned three years, but I guess I wanna know for sure. I, I would think it'd be about that time. Okay. I'm, I'll confirm, okay. I'm sorry, we didn't get to check no, in no, as, no, no, as no, much no, as no, I would okay. like, but that's okay. considering so the situation. Right. If you could get us an answer as to how far back can we go okay. for these, both with, with respect to engineering and um, legal fees. Okay. Um, and then the second part of that is, so now we have, well, this is part A and B. So we have people that aren't, aren't responding to us. If they have a permit that they've applied for and paid for, but haven't picked up. Well, they paid the application they paid fee. The application not, fee. So they paid the application fee. It was approved. Now their approved permit is here and they still owe whatever many fees. Can you pull it back? Can we pull the permit back? I'm not going to tell you another answer on the top of my head. Um, so let me check with uh, and I, I, Alicia from our right. office is the one who does a lot of that type of okay. stuff, figuring out the collection, the collections, or if, what your remedies are. If we okay. just say, right. So, uh, so especially yes. for when you're going back, right. what your rights are. Well, this one is recent. Right. This, this one's recent, recent, but I'm saying you're going back right. and people start ignoring you. Right. Well, I love. I'll, I'll talk with Alicia and we'll tell you guys. Okay. Like, we'll give you a summary basically what your rights are okay. and what, what the procedures are okay. going to be. So currently this is an active issue for right now for, for this one particular person. Then the second part of that is as a board, we were discussing what should we do when people aren't paying the fees? So let's say it's not the case where they have a permit that they paid for, uh, but they haven't physically come and pick up. So now let's say the job is complete, everything is done and we've sent them a copy of the engineering bill and they're not paying us the fees that they should be paying us. So we've sent letter number one, we've sent number, letter number two, I'm ready to send letter number three. We've included a 6% charge on that. Um, if they don't pay us by letter number three, what are our options? So we agreed that we wouldn't mind doing some type of a payment plan. We would give them like a fixed time frame, like a year. Yeah. Um, how can we structure that? And or um, how do other townships and boroughs handle collections? Well, because, because some of these fees can be quite substantial. So this yeah. individual, um, it's now up to $1,200. One of the things that we want to be cognizant of is we don't want to get in the business of being a bank. We don't want to be a collection agency. Yeah. We want to have something with where if somebody has a, a genuine hardship or has to make payment plans in order to actually pay off said thing rather than, you know, just not paying it. Let me, let me talk with... I, I had a feeling that's where you were going to go, yeah. is, you know, the payment plan and all that. Let me talk with uh, Alicia and let's also take a look at, I want, I don't, it's, I haven't had to ask that question before, I don't want to, but I no. know she handles uh, some collection items for, for municipalities um, on their legal, who work primarily with Andy, so she might know the answer on the top of her head, because if we do collections work for a municipality, she usually okay. handles it. So. Is there a way to avoid these fees passing through the township? Why can't the engineer and the solicitor just because build like direct? So these, these are for stormwater yeah. reviews and land development reviews. So um, even when somebody submits a sketch plan for review, goes before planning commission, our engineer reviews that. That's a fee. But we don't, we don't invoice. Our office was not engaged by that client. By that individual so it's inappropriate for me to send a bill to them directly um, can can they be engaged directly no yeah no because we Jim, represent it's, you it's yeah. kind of like the seo stuff because where the stuff comes we through are the ones that, that have to make sure that the stormwater issues are being it's, done but I, it's so we're the yeah. regulatory agency in that respect yeah. but yeah. you guys are my client so i know my right. client um well, we obviously need to make sure that we're not using taxpayer dollars to pay right for right yeah. and that's that that's the problem that we encountered mm -hmm. and that we had a uh-oh moment 
So if I know that we could go back three years, I'll, I'll, I'll bother you to come help me with uh, mm -hmm. writing up those letters. It, there's a pre-printed format on the computer already, sending everything, you know, photocopying, sending everything out and so mm -hmm. seeing you know, what we can recover. Yeah, because unfortunately that's that's exactly what's happened. The taxpayer dollars have been done, you know, it, it was something that was lost over. Okay. Yeah. Are she still there for me? Yeah, so so far we've recovered about four thousand dollars of six thousand right? that we've sent bills for. But yeah. 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 And there's a stack this big on the desk for me to go back here. So if, if you're gonna have side conversations, if you could keep the volume down, please. Okay, yeah, so we'll look at it, but I also uh, recommended that she have a call to uh, the borough secretary. That thank you. Be, thank you. It will just kind of say this yeah. is what our office, our back office does. Yeah. Um, and frankly, just say we're involved. Okay. Okay. Next up on the agenda, last item on the agenda is around the Act 537 and the on lot management program. Our next step that we're actively beginning is to getting the income study done, which will give us a good gauge of affordability within the community. Uh, the next prong of that is the on lot management ordinance, which does require uh, routine pump outs, uh, which will provide a, a one, a benefit to the fact that these things have probably never been maintained, and two, to provide information around the general uh, overall condition of the on lot systems in the area. Um, we need to get the letter out. Um, I put the most recent draft with some, some tweaks that I was able to make on the Google Drive. It's in the, the, the folder for tonight's meeting. Um, other than some adjustments on certain things and maybe some additions, uh, Kelly had asked that we put some advertisement on the, the main letter around the upcoming car show. Um, other than that, I believe the, the core content, especially around the on lot letter, uh, Alan had more or less barring a couple of little changes that we had already made, kind of give it a, given it his blessing. If, uh, Peter, excuse me. If you look in your packet hmm? that I scanned for tonight, yep. Irene nicely did up a short little newsy kind of. Oh, cool. I didn't page. even see that. Thank you. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, we worked on that yesterday. Cool. So I will review that. I'll review that. Community and... Association is on there. Excellent. So that'll probably, in all seriousness, that'll replace the, the original main page that yeah, we had that had some of the some detail. Of the information had is was old. Little, yeah. yeah. So we just updated so can, it. Can yesterday. we send this out ASAP? Yeah, yeah that's uh, that's that's, uh, that's actually yeah. the goal. Is okay. I'll, I'll look over Irene and Sue's edits and kind of try and snap yeah. that in. And then once we circulate it another round, the next step would be to pull the trigger on it. We'll get it printed. We'll mail it out and yeah. get it out. Would you mind giving me some direction now rather than waiting another month? Oh yeah, like um, so. Like so what say we can do? What you want me to do, and then I can do that instead of waiting another month. So because we don't has to get out. We can motion to mail the letter, whether we do it tomorrow or sometime before the next meeting doesn't matter. Um, I'll be then in touch with you. You can be in touch with Irene. We just can't decide collectively at, as a board for the mo purposes of motion. Exactly. We can decide well, the, on wording. Letter, That's not a huge deal. The letter about the pump outs is the one that Alan emailed everyone. Yeah. yeah. That's his correct, not yeah. his, uh, edits, his, his edits, correct, yeah. Okay? So if you looked at that. So, mean, so the only thing that you looked at it already. So what I yeah. suggested is we have it's Alan's letter, down. the map on the back, our newsletter of the zoning map on the back. Mm -hmm. And just to simplify it so that it's two papers and each have a different map on the back and yeah. that's it. Yep. So that's, I'm going to merge these down. And barring any grammatical things that you might see for uh, this could be worded better or anything like that, I think we're pretty much ready to go okay. on that. Um, That's what I'm going to hear. So we need to do this. Just I know. So, okay. Yeah. So, motion, <laughs> motion is being made to uh, authorize the sending of the one lot management ordinance and cover associated cover letter uh, as soon as possible. Thank you. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Alan, in addition to our letter, we'll be sending out his letter sometime between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, we just want to make sure we get ours, which is going to be a little more uh, introductory in nature out before he gets his out. Where are we on the income study? Uh, I got to touch base with the, the lady that Jim McCarthy connected to. I haven't gotten an update. 
recently, but uh, she was getting the preliminary stuff around that together. We um, need to do that ASAP too. Yeah. Yeah, it's we need to do that much sooner rather than later, but we are still within that area on the plan that was submitted by the the other board members. Mm -hmm. uh, we're we're in the window where we are allowed to look for for funding and do income studies. Um, and we we had actually set that fairly broad. That was one of the, the few concessions that I could get the board to make uh, when I was uh, non-majority was making sure that we had extended that out to like 84 months rather than 12. So we've, we've at least given ourselves a fair amount of runway to, to deal with that and be able to assemble data and, and hopefully, hopefully build a cogent argument for there's no possible way we can afford this. So um, with that said, that is the last item on the agenda. I have uh, only one comment and I will, assuming the it's at the end of the packet, which I think I saw out there earlier. We did the, not get a police report. Okay, so I did not see it at the end of the packet. It was something else. So I'll skip the police report until next month. My only comment is uh, I've been talking to McCarthy Engineering about starting the traffic study on Main Street to see if we are going to be able to satisfy any of the warrants around a stop sign or stop signs. Um, so as more of that develops, I'll share, but uh, we're trying to get the, the stuff in place to do the traffic study uh, along the Main Street corridor. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm, I'm hoping that we, oh we are yeah. able to meet it in one way or the other in any one of the three intersections. So I think that's yeah. going to be an immense benefit and to be speeding. And there'll be signage saying stop sign ahead, yep. stop sign ahead. And we can actually, um, just by simple ordinance, we can place like intersection ahead. Um, we're doing a line painting along Main Street to make it a little more visually narrow. We, we talked about buying the, the pedestrian crossing bollards, yep. but at the intersections. It's all little stuff that I think is going to add up for, unless people are really intentionally speeding, uh, will help cut that down. Um, I got to devote some time to looking at the, the speed sign because like I said, I think there was a power issue. Uh, battery might be dead too, but I think there was an issue with the charging circuit that I need to look at, but we can also put the speed sign out on Main Street, cover a bunch of bases. Um, I made a couple of phone calls to places. Nowhere has that the the, uh, the rumble hog, as it's known in, in the construction area for putting, putting the rumble strips in, because uh, having that coming right off of the triangle at 422, I think would help to cut people down a little bit. Because I know it's it's easy enough to, to exit the highway at speed and then just kind of keep doing that. So more to follow on that as I have it, but it's a pretty niche piece of equipment. So not many places, if any, that I've found so far have it for, for rent even. Um, yes. In the last year, up by Double Platform, mm -hmm. Home Depot, they, they put some jungle strips there. Yeah, yeah that's, that's one of the things that I've been finding. And I, I need to call, um, who was Harrison Payton, who did the block, like the foil and chip to see if they have anything like that. Cause that's the only thing I can think of. If we can't go out and rent it, we might have to start looking at companies that specialize in that sort of thing to be able to just have them come out and do it. Um, so more on that as I have it, but that's that's what I'm thinking. It's we can tackle the speeding problem with a bunch of little stuff rather than one overly drastic thing. Like I don't think any of us here want to put in a speed bump. Um, he is le least speed of all bump. Push. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's all I had for comments. I got a new car, yeah. so I don't feel the speed. Bump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but when you're plowing, yeah. Uh, Irene, any comments? Um, just real quick, I guess another question for you. Uh, during our workshop meeting, it was on behalf of the emergency management coordinator. He was um, asking about creating possibly a fire marshal position. What information could you give us on that, whether by ordinance and restrictions, um, mm -hmm. things of the I know it's a loaded question. I know, I just, I've, I've always seen that they've had them. So, yeah. Uh, if you, again, yeah. if something to get back, creating a so, fire marshal position. And really, it, it, it's to better merge um, activities between emergency management coordinator, fire departments, police, et cetera, so that we have a, a better system because unfortunately the weather is getting more severe, things like that, but to, to basically foster better communication, better relationships okay. within the community itself. So, okay. All right. Uh, Whatever you can get back to us on that. Again, no urgency, just something that we have kind of. We, we, we had a brief discussion on last uh, okay. workshop meeting, so. Okay, uh, if you have no other comments, Jim. Well, this was just handed to me. I'm sorry, I'm sitting on the table. We talked about earlier that people don't do what they're supposed to do. Property maintenance, six people that have ignored us, ignored us, ignored us, and this is why we have to have laws.
Well, it's kind of like the so that's what I've been asking for, Al, is that we should, the, the, the fine should not be $100. $100 doesn't get people's attention. Maybe 1000 would get their attention if for the second or third offense. And that's why I think we need to take a good close look at this property maintenance ordinance because we're being ignored. And we've been ignored forever. Yes. Yeah, so, it's, you know, it's the, the same, good people it's the in this town thing. should not it's have to put thing, up with a few animal. bad people taking advantage of all of us by ignoring us. Yeah. So, I didn't even know this was here, but I yeah, apologize. I'm glad to see it. Yeah, and, and At least we're taking action on it. Just, just a, as a side note on that, not all of the six that are on this list are people that are def defying anything or, or flagrantly ignoring things. So like one of these was beginning of September that they got a letter that's relatively new. Somebody else was, uh, I think they, they noticed uh, something that needs to be fixed on the roof. And it was a, a circle back around from like two months ago. So some of these are, are people that are, are not maybe engaging with us or are ignoring us. And some of them are just legitimate, they're, they're new. So uh, Courtney, do you have any comments as a solicitor? No, I just wanted to say thank you for all your kind comments towards me and to Andy over the past week or so. He's doing better. And I just, you call him every day with Bradley. So thank you guys. Well, thank yeah, you. We, we hope he's... He should, he should be back home in the next week or so, probably two weeks. Um, but he has, is no longer in an ICU. Good. And um, we just really appreciate how great everybody has been with allowing us to work as a team. <laughs> um, and even for, you know, just the kind words that I've received, even from people who are in the audience today who actually came over to say something, it means a lot. So yeah, we like um, seeing you, Courtney. We yeah, wish it was yeah. under different circumstances. I know. But. You guys are great. I just wish I wasn't here because of that. Um, <laughs> but I, it's, I do share, I have been sharing the kind things that have been said. So I just wanted you guys to know that it's appreciated. Um, and uh, we're trying really hard to make sure that you guys are prioritized. So luckily they hired me. <laughs> Good. Thank you. We must say, Andy, that you're doing a fantastic job. So Can we get some kind of ordinance here on, on some of these trees to lower them a little bit? Like go ahead and next door, that tree there will stick in sky high. If one of the trees fall over, it'll take three houses away. You can cut them off halfway, better chance not to happen. So what I can say right now is we'll we'll look and see what what could be done if anything because yeah, as, aside from the ordinance aspect of that because I, I don't want to delve too deeply into that that becomes a a personal property liability issue where you have a tree and it falls on somebody else's house that's you as a homeowner that's you, legally you know responsible say, probably act of God would be my guess yeah 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 I'm in. yeah and everybody that's in. So we'll we'll look we'll look and see what what could be done if anything. Yes. Excuse me. One at a time, please. Yes, please. And anybody who wants to talk needs to come up here. Yeah. Okay. So everyone can hear on Zoom. Yeah, we appreciate it. I'm I'm sorry. If you need me to speak up, please say so. Hi, I'm Beverly Brossman. I'm Edna Modernis's daughter, uh, four twelve uh, Water Street. Uh, I have a comment uh you were discussing about the uh, fee about people not doing the stuff that you're asked for well my mother 30 years ago got a letter from the township about something she had uh, at that time she had a building with weeds and stuff like that and she was told that if she didn't get this done in a certain amount of time she was going to have to pay 500 dollars. and she was also Oh, really? persistently uh one of the supervisors was after her constantly about her property and i see a whole lot worse here than what my mom was yeah so, so that agree. fee was that that time 30 years ago 500 dollars. yeah so the only thing that jumps out to my the nuisance ordinance has something in there i don't recall it being 500 dollars, but um, i think that that supervisor yeah just was somebody might have been it's not $500. In Probably. some instances, it should be, but well, it's not. Off, yeah. I, I have a Thank you. So, well, and the ordinances may have changed. Yeah, so stuff yeah. may have changed. There but, was a period where things were 
have gone down. And then now, um, I mean, you guys had some that you referenced had not been updated since the mm -hmm. 90s. I just updated a road cut ordinance where, for example, if UGI has to cut into the road, uh, they, they, should, they should have to pay a fee and also get a permit and everything. So we're aware that they're doing it. Um, and that one hadn't been updated in, since before I was born. Mm -hmm. And uh, it it's, makes a difference. So yeah. it's good to be doing a, a regular evaluation of those. Um, but yes, if, if it hasn't been updated since before I was born, Fuel Most Rush has decided that's when they have to update it. They're yeah. using my ages yeah. as well. And, and, and Beverly, <laughs> just as a, a point, quick point, the reason that we, we discuss so many of these things at length the rental ordinance, the IPMC before it was adopted is we want to make sure that we can help people that need it, but not create a, a, a weapon that somebody can use to beat somebody over the head. That's the whole intent on this. And it's, it's a different, difficult balancing act. That's also one of the main reasons that uh, prior boards, and I agree with the decision, uh, we have an, an unbiased, impartial third party. We have craft codes that we pay to go out and do that so that you don't have a situation where somebody on the board has a chip on their shoulder or somebody in the township has a chip on their shoulder and they, they start going after you. It really is truly a, a fair implementation of here's what it is. And we, we actually, as again, as a board, we have directed craft to err on the side of leniency. Don't go the route of fines. Don't go the route of, uh, of punitive actions. Give people the benefit of the doubt. I like to use the example of the one property out on Forge Road that looked like a, a yard sale blew up on the lawn. They got a letter and they immediately started taking action. It took a while and they're still actively working on it. But week over week, if you drive by, you can see that they're making a good, honest effort to address the thing. And they've not gotten any follow-up fines, or I don't even think they've gotten any follow-up letters because Kraft, the, the enforcement body, has been just kind of checking in on them, working with them. The intent is to fix a problem, not penalize people. So thank you for very much for your comment and just kind of rest assured that we're, we're doing everything we can to make sure that that's something that doesn't happen for you, your mother, or anybody else in the township. Um, Sue, do you have any comments? I do not. Okay, fantastic. I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The, now, the time is now uh, 8.57 p.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Have a good night, everyone.